Hello, I'm Kainson, the genius, and today we are going to discuss statistical decision theory. Statistical decision theory is a very important topic in artificial intelligence and machine learning. And even in real life, statistical decision theory applies to virtually all aspects of our lives. For instance, in the field of aviation, the pilots need to take decisions, or even the autopilots need to take decisions. You may have heard of the goal line technology whereby decisions have to be made as to whether there is a goal or not. We also have in the field of manufacturing to decide whether a product meets up the requirements. So virtually everywhere statistical decision theory applies. Maybe we can remove the word statistical and just say decision theory is about the same thing. What you are seeing here is called the loss matrix and we are going to discuss it as we move along. Now, just want to remind you, please subscribe to my channel. Click on the subscribe button so that you subscribe, at least for two reasons. One, uh, my videos are based on the requests of my subscribers. So if you make a request, say you want the topic to be discussed or you want me to ex explain clearly on some concepts in artificial intelligence or machine learning, I'm going to respond to you immediately. Secondly, if you subscribe, and my videos will be rated higher and that will outstand the chance of making better videos for you at, at some other time. So please click on the subscription button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for doing that. So let's see what are we going to cover today. We are going to discuss about uh, seven different topics. One is what is decision theory application of decision theory in case of cancer diagnosis then we have to take a formal definition we now differentiate between false positives and false negatives minimizing misclassification reducing expected loss and then we briefly look at uh, introduction to ROC which means receiver operating characteristics call all right let's take the first one what is decision theory and what is the goal of decision theory decision theory is a theory in the field of machine learning that allows us to make optimal decision in situations involving uncertainty of course you know that many aspects of life involves uncertainty so how do we make the right decision when we are not sure of which decision to make from the figure below we can see that a physician can make four different decisions when faced with cancer diagnosis. Now, the goal of decision theory is two of is, uh, there are two of them. One, minimize wrong decision. For sure, wrong decisions might be made sometimes. And the goal number two, when wrong decisions are made, reduce the expected loss. Now, there are two wrong decisions that may be made, but the losses incurred in two of them are different. Okay, so let's proceed to the next part, and that is application of decision theory in cancer diagnosis. Now, we have this table here called the loss matrix. Okay, so scenario one is when there is presence of cancer and the physician decides to perform a surgery. We can say this is 100% good, it's the best decision to be made. Scenario 2, which is very bad, is when there is presence of cancer and the physician decides not to perform a surgery. That is a score of zero. It's a worst case scenario because of the consequences involved. The consequences might actually be the death of the patients. And scenario 3 is cancer is absent, okay, and the physician decides to perform a surgery anyway. This is a bad decision, but not uh, as bad as the previous one. The reason is because the expected loss from this one is not as enormous as expected loss from this one. Scenario 4 is also good. Cancer is absent and the physician decides not to perform a surgery. We can see that this is not 100%. The reason is because this is not enough for us to give a great to the physician because nothing was done. It's possible that the, there may be other uh, uh, things that may be involved 
but let's just continue. All right, so let's proceed. Formal definition of this decision theory. Consider that we have an input vector x, an input vector consisting of series of uh, values, a corresponding vector t of target variables. Remember that in supervised learning, you have a training data set that is made up of an input vector like x and corresponding target vectors. So you are given the input and the output. And then we have two classes, C1 and C2. In case of cancer diagnosis, C1 means presence of cancer and C2 means absence of cancer. All right, so they let T1 correspond to class C C1 and T0 corresponds to class C2. We need to determine the joint probability distribution Px and Ck where k is equal to 1 or 2. So in this case we have c1 and c2 and we have an input value x. We need to decide sorry this is going too far. Alright so we have an input value x. We need to decide whether to assign it to either c1 or c2. Okay so Maybe when we dis look at the case of cancer diagnosis, it becomes a little clearer. Before we look at cancer diagnosis, let's look at false positives and false negatives. Now, what is false positive? False negative first. In this case, there is presence of cancer, okay, but the decision is to perform, is not to perform a surgery, okay. False negative in this case is decision not to perform a surgery, whereas there is presence of cancer. So it means that a decision was taken not to do something when actually the right decision is to do it. What is false positive? When a decision decide a, a, the physician decides to carry out this surgery anyway when there is no uh, 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 cancer. So false positive arises when an action is decided when actually it's not necessary. Let's dig a little deeper. In this case now, remember the first goal of decision theory is to minimize misclassification. We want to avoid misclassification. That is the, 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 the goal. So one approach is to divide the input space into regions. So let me use a uh, pen so that I could try on the screen. So you have regions of the input RK, meaning that you can have uh, R1, R2, and so on. Now you have this input values X1, X2, and so on. So you assign the input data into regions, divide them into regions such that data in region 1 is assigned to C1, data in region 2 is assigned to C2. Now in case of C1 and C2, a problem will occur or misclassification when an input vector in region R1 is assigned to C2 or vector in region R2 is assigned to C1. So total misclassification, the possibility of misclassification is to sum up these two uh, probabilities of misclassification. So the probability of assigning uh, data from region R1 to C2 plus assigning to R1 when it belongs to C2. So add them together. That gives us the misclassification probability of misclassification for the total data site. So if we now uh, take the integral over the whole region R1 to be the, the joint probability of assigning to C2 when actually it belongs to C1 plus the joint probability of assigning to C1 when it belongs to C2. So it means that to minimize misclassification we must choose to assign X to which class has the smaller value of the integrand. So we need to minimize we need to minimize this 
So this is a case of calculus. I'm, I'm not sure. Let's not uh, get involved. But one thing you need to do: try to understand this formula. At least know how to write this formula in case of an exam. All right, reducing expected loss. In this case, we need to know what the loss matrix is. The loss matrix, as you can see, is this table. The expected loss is a situation whereby we assign uh, a class to CJ, whereas the correct class is CK. It means that there is a loss LKJ. Understand it. We assign a value to a class CJ when it belongs to CK. Then we incur a loss called LKJ. The average loss is now given by this equation where we sum over the whole region K and then sum over the whole region J and then take the integral over this region. So we have the total uh, uh, loss or average loss function is given by this formula. Let's not go into explaining this, but if you wish, you can just uh, read a little more about it. The best solution is one that minimizes the average loss function. And for a given input vector, our uncertainty in the correct class is expressed through the joint probability distribution. So we always use this because it expresses the uncertainty of a particular action being taken. Now, the ROC curve. Actually, this is not part of this class, but I just want to introduce it so that maybe when we discuss it next time, it will appear a bit familiar. ROC curve is created by plotting the true positive rate against the false positive rate at various threshold settings. I'm not going to go beyond this because there is a lesson devoted especially for this. Alright, I think I'm going to uh, stop here. Okay, this ROC curve continues details in another presentation. So this is where we come to the end of this presentation. I would like to thank you for viewing. Please subscribe if you've not done so, so that you get updates when I make new presentations on artificial intelligence and machine learning. You can also share this with your friends. You can also like it or even hate it, so that I'll know the areas I need to improve on this. I remain kind and the uh, kind and the genius, and thanks for being there.